hello students so today we are going to discuss about examination of microfilaria so this microfilaria it can be detected or may be detected in peripheral blood both in unstained mounds as well as in stained smears so <clears throat> the methods it can be detected by different methods okay so sample collection <coughs> according to periodicity of microfilaria then the concentration it can be by two methods sedimentation or membrane filtration method then we can also detect it with dec pro provocation method so first we'll discuss with the uh, wet mound method so here two to three drops of blood are collected on a clean glass slide and mixed with two drops of water to lyse the red cells after that the preparation is covered with a cover slip and seal then the preparation is examined under the low power microscope for the motile microfilari which can be seen wriggling about or swirling in the blood cells in their neighborhood then the examination may conveniently be, def be deferred till next morning as microfilari retain their uh, viability and motility for one to two days at room temperature okay then by using a simple counting chamber we can count this microfilary in the wet mount <coughs> then the stain smear here a thick smear is prepared as for malaria dehemoglobinized and stained with leishman stain gemsa stain or delafil's hematoxylin stains then the stain smears have the advantage that the morphology of microfilaria can be studied and species identification can be made thus offered for differentiation between microfilaria bancrofti and microfilaria um, malay stain smears are necessary sometimes microfilaria may be seen in the in thin smears also then by using a measured quantity of blood for pre uh, preparing smears for example with a 20 cubic mm pipette in counting the total number of microfilari in the smear microfilari counts can be obtained then we multiply the number of microfilari in a 20 cubic millimeter uh, smear by 50 which gives the count per ml of blood okay so this will be the microscopic picture of the first diagram or the first image figure we have is the microfilaria of Mucheria bancrofti okay which is in uh, stained by chemsa stain it is a thick blood smear stained stain, and it is captured at 500x or magnification then the second one the middle figure it is the microfilaria of uh, brugia malay in a thick blood smear stain with same stain gemsa stain and it is also captured at 500x or magnification then <coughs> third picture that is the last figure <coughs> we have is the microfilaria of B. Timori, this is also in a thick blood smear stain with Chemsa stain. <coughs> okay, so coming to the concentration methods, like I have mentioned earlier, we have sedimentation method and membrane filtration concentration. So these two are the under concentration methods. Uh, this both the methods have been developed to recover low number of microfilari from blood and employed venous blood so first we'll discuss with the sedimentation method in this sedimentation method the sample of blood is first lysed with acetic acid then saponin or other lithic substance <coughs> or by freeze thawing and then we centrifuge it then the sediment is stained and the microfilari are counted <coughs> for staining part we can do this and uh, gemsa stain 
okay then we have the membrane filtration method so in membrane filtration method a measured quantity of 1 to 5 ml of blood is collected into an anticoagulant solution and passed through the membrane filters fixed on syringe with with a Sweeney filter holder then the blood cells and proteins sticking onto the filter are washed away by repeatedly passing saline through it then the filter is removed place on a slight stain with dilute gemsa stain and examine under low power microscope for microfilaring <clears throat> then uh, millipore and nucleopore membrane filters 5 micrometer porosity are available for this purpose the latter being more sensitive as it can screen larger volumes of blood this membrane filtration recovers more species of microfilari however because they are sm of their small size mancinella perstens and mancinella ozardi may not be recovered the membranes with smaller pores that is 3 micro 3 micrometer have been suggested to recover these two species that is mansonella perstan and mansonella ozardi this membrane filter method is much more sensitive than the um, much more sensitive than the finger prick method as the blood samples are taken during the day time it also gives uh, reliable results even in nocturnal period microfilari however the method has the disadvantages that venipuncture is necessary membranes are costly and microfilari may not be in a satisfactory condition for detailed morphology morphological studies okay then the number of uh, this microfilari counted is divided by 10 giving gives the number of microfilari per ml of blood this is the most sensitive method for detecting small numbers of microfilari but it is ex expensive for routine use okay so that's for the uh, membrane filtration concentration so the next method we have is a micro hematocrit tube method or a buffy we also call it a buffy coat method out here uh, capillary blood is collected into heparinized capillary tubes for about 100 microliter is first collected into EDTA anticoagulant and then transferred to plain capillary tubes the blood is then centrifuged in a micro hematocrit centrifuge it will be separate okay like not the same centrifuge we have also a centrifuge centrifuge known as micro hematocrit centrifuge then the buffy coat is examined microscopically for the motile microflurry <coughs> sorry then in areas where the species is known and mancinella microflurry are not found this is a rapid technique for detecting microfilari. So, the buffy coat containing the VBCs and platelets obtained after centrifugation of whole anticoagulated blood and the layer of RBCs just below the buffy coat layer can be used to prepare thick and thin blood films. In suspected infections with filaria, leishmania, trypanosoma, and malaria. The sensitivity of this method is much higher than that of the routine thick film as compared to the thin film. <coughs> so that's all about the uh, buffy coat method. then we have the last method that is DEC provocation test or diethyl carbamazine provocation test so this test it is oral an oral administration oral test of DEC which brings about mobilization of microfilari 
to the peripheral blood. Then the blood collected 20 to 50 minutes after the drug is given. This will show microfilari so that blood collection can be done during daytime. <clears throat> this is a great advantage for surveys, but the drug may cause uh, febrile reactions, particularly in rugiosis. This cannot be used in areas endemic for onchocerciasis because of the danger of provoking severe reactions. So this is a pictorial key for the detection of microfilari in blood. You can see the imaged here it's given all the types of uh, different species of microfilari under microfilari okay so we have size large generally more than 200 micrometer then the sheet may be present this might be one of the species or one of the parasite that is Vucheria bancrofti, which has short head space and tail anuclate. Then, in case of uh, the next one, we have is tail nucleate at or to the tip. We have the name as Loa Loa and Brugia species. Then, under Brugia species, again, we have two species under brugia species we have two species okay that is brugia malay and brugia timori then that is for the case of the large size parasite which is more than 200 micrometer then for the small size <coughs> generally below <coughs> less than 200 micrometer which doesn't have a sheet okay so those cases of parasite includes mansonella perstens and mansonella ozardi so these are the two species or two parasite which have a smaller size less than 200 micrometer so that's all about examination of microfilari thank you